we're in an age now where bodies are blurring. We can indefinitely preserve a corpse. We can sustain a comatose body on a technological life support system. Cryogenically preserved bodies are awaiting reanimation. Blood that's circulating in my body now might be circulating in your body tomorrow. We can engineer new kinds of chimeric architectures in vitro, grow tissue and insert stem cells in vivo. So we're really at a time of the cadaver, the comatose and the chimera. Uh, well, I'm a performance artist and I've um, performed for, well, yeah, this, this what am I sort of thing, it's, it's, I find it very difficult to answer. I mean, it's sort of... It's an I don't, interesting question, right? Uh, well, not really. <laughs> um, let's just talk about the art. <laughs> It's not that I've, I've sort of mastered a particular skill or a work with only one particular medium. I'm not a painter or a sculptor in that traditional sense. I'm a performance artist. So th the works are conceptually driven and, and they're realised and manifested in a multiplicity of different media like medical imaging or, uh, or robotics or computer programming or surgical modification. The stomach sculpture was a project I did in 1993. I designed this uh, object that opens and closes, extends and retracts, has a flashing light and a beeping sound. So you have to imagine this kind of uh, simple machine choreography occurring inside the stomach which is normally wet and dark and somewhat vulnerable. At the same time, we also had, a, had to have an endoscopic tube that tracked the insertion uh, in, into the stomach uh, uh, cavity. So the body here is performing as a split body. A voltage in, producing the involuntary movements, voltage out, uh, enabling it to control a mechanical manipulator. This is a, a six-legged walking robot and it's not only a, a walking machine but it's also a sound machine. This was a project that was done in Hamburg when I was doing a residency there with the assistance of F-18, a group of artists and engineers. Uh, it took uh, all in all six months to design, engineer and finally to perform on it. The more and more performances I do, the less and less I think I have a mind of my own, nor any mind at all in the traditional metaphysical sense. So what you see is what you get. Uh, a physical body that's obsolete, empty, augmented with technology and that performs largely involuntarily. One hour is, it's too little time. I mean, one hour should be enough, but we need, if there is no problem, if there is a problem, we need more than one hour, yeah? But what we need to do is to make a fixed support so that uh, the robot can correctly use its tilt sensor, uh, otherwise it'll walk off the, off the edge of the plinth. Fuck you.
Uso Mercado. Ah. Uh, no. no. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. It's okay for you. Th this shadow is very nice, but yeah. we can't see it. You know, it's uh, directly. So let's try and. Uh... Shit. I was always interested in uh, uh, the evolutionary sort of architecture of the human body. Always envious of athletes, singers, dancers who use their own body as their sort of medium of expression and experience. So I guess that's how it started. Hello, nice to see you. It's a for us. Oh, yeah. a big moment for me too. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> oh, that's even, yeah. that's even a bigger <laughs> moment. <laughs> the spectrum of opinion ranges from um, uh, fascination to bemusement and two occasional expressions of horror in that, um, you know, I might be slipping towards the notion of a monstrous body. <laughs> Can I see your uh, ear? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, uh, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Is it an erotic area? Uh, no, no, not really, no, no. The idea with the extra ear was to construct a soft prosthesis. I had already been performing with a third hand, but I wanted to have something uh, engineered on my body using my own skin. So this is only a, a relief of an ear at the moment. We still have to sort of lift the helix to construct a conch that'll involve a skin graft, and then using adipo-derived stem cells extracted from my body, we're going to be growing a soft earlobe. Uh, so this will be a much more convincing 3D structure uh, of an ear on an arm, um, and then we'll be able to insert the uh, electronics. We would implant a small microphone that connected to a wireless transmitter uh, would enable the ear to be internet enabled within any Wi-Fi hotspot. So, uh, you know, if you're in London and I'm in Melbourne, Australia, you would be able to hear what my ear is listening to wherever you are and wherever I am. If you call me on your cell phone, yeah. I will be able to right. speak to you through my ear. But I will hear your voice in my head because the receiver and speaker will be inside my mouth. If I keep my mouth closed, only I will hear your voice. If I open my mouth, he will hear your voice coming from my mouth. <laughs> well, the um, ear project has always been uh, problematic, not only with my friends, but also uh, with my partners. Uh, I, I have to say that um, I probably lost a partner because of the uh, ear project and joking that I was going to um, insert a fluorescent gene so it would glow in the dark. <laughs> but uh, Nina is much more understanding. Uh, we met uh, actually in a morgue. I saw her carrying a human arm, and I guess uh, that's why she first uh, attracted my attention. 
Uh, you know, I'm kind of kind of shy with um, relationships, but I guess I didn't have much competition down there. <laughs> All the other bodies were somewhat stiff and cold. <laughs> Have you oh. seen this ever? <laughs> <laughs> She's very <laughs> Well, certainly there have been no regrets. I've um, taken over 12 years to yeah. try to realise this project. Certainly undergoing two <laughs> surgical procedures and there'll be another one coming up with stem cell work. It's going to involve um, more discomfort. I mean, you don't recover in a few weeks, it takes months to recover from the surgery and months more before you're ready to do something in addition. So uh, there'll be more risks when we reinsert the microphone and the electronics, which means that uh, there's no guarantee the project will be successful, uh, successfully realised. I'd hope people will become curious about what in actuality is a body and how a body performs in the world and what it means to be human and is it really necessary to, to operate as if we are a self or a soul or a mind. Aren't these rather medieval entities that we should just really do without. These are outmoded metaphysical assumptions from Platonic to Cartesian to Freudian constructs of internal essences. These really are, are not necessary in terms of uh, functioning in, in, in the world. Oh, it's a different. It's, it's a f fucking French keyboard. <coughs> I will remember you said that when robots take over the world. <laughs> so I think if people kind of go away asking more questions and having received answers, then I'd be happy with that. <laughs>